Welcome back. Simon's Community Garden was created in Winston-Salem and is now open to residents across the city. They also host several events throughout the summer, including a farmer's market that's going to be tomorrow morning. And should be beautiful weather for this too, Jacqueline has told us. This morning, let's say good morning to Kyle Luth joining us live. He's the co-manager of Simon's Community Garden. Thanks for being with us this morning. Good morning, thanks for having me. You're very welcome. So Kyle, first tell us the location of the garden. Why exactly this is a good fit too for a farmer's market to be held there? Sure, yeah, so the garden is located at the Enterprise Center uh, at 1922 South Martin Luther King Jr. Drive in uh, Winston-Salem. Um, a little bit about the history. Uh, its name is the namesake of the founder of Winston-Salem State, um, Simon Atkins, oh. and um, it was started by faculty members at Winston-Salem State um, to correspond with some coursework and then kind of got um, taken up by the community and so has existed ever since um, as a community-led endeavor um, that partners uh, at, from time to time with Winston-Salem State. Um, and the big reason for the farmer's market and all the rest of the things we have there is we have a little bit over an acre of land. And so we have 85 garden beds. We do some in-ground planting as well. We have a native uh, pollinator garden, um, a, a peace pole area for rest and meditation and a fire pit. And so all sorts of really wonderful things and lots of produce. And so it's a really good opportunity for us to connect with the community and uh, improve access to um, healthy produce in an area of Winston that is uh, designated as a food desert. It's wow. amazing that this is such a large space that you're able to provide. Mm -hmm. So folks who are interested in being a part of the community garden and maybe utilizing it, taking some of those fruits and vegetables or even pouring back into it, how can they get involved? Yeah, so there's lots of ways to plug in. Um, so you can do things as simple as show up to the farmer's market and um, that we we have uh, produce available, fresh organic produce available at um, affordable prices. Those that money raised from that just goes right back into supporting the garden. Um, we also have community programming that I think we'll talk a little bit more about in a few minutes. Um, so there's lots of, we want it to be a space that is not just for gardening, that doesn't trivialize the fact that we do uh, produce over a ton of produce every year, but it's also a community space where we have um, opportunities to learn, to, um, to have time with community members. It's just a really wonderful space. Um, so lots of ways to plug in. And if you're not a big gardener and maybe even don't even love to be outside, but you like our mission, we can always use support from um, corporate sponsors and from volunteers to help keep um, what we're doing going. Awesome. And we're showing some great photos mm -hmm. too. And I think we saw some, maybe you with some kids. Or is, are there some programs that are <laughs> geared toward, you know, kind of our younger generation? Yeah, absolutely. So we have a youth garden club that meets uh, during the summer every Tuesday uh, at six o'clock. Um, and that is open to anyone who would like to attend. Um, and if you want to attend with your child, you can do that. Or if you want to drop them with us for uh, an hour or so, um, we'll teach them all about gardening. And um, we connect it. We try to connect it with the um, NCDPI, Department of Education, um, standards um, as much as we can. So there's some good education opportunities there in the garden. We also have a Growing Futures program where we're able to pay at-risk youth to work in the garden and then that makes them eligible for a scholarship when they turn 18 that they can apply to um, either education expenses, job training expenses, or launching their own business. Um, and in addition to those programs, we also have our Cooking in the Garden program. We have lots of youth that show up to this. It's a hands-on cooking opportunity. So we invite a chef from our shared use kitchen. They'll walk step by step through some recipes. Folks take the recipes home with them, but they also get to cook right along with the chefs um, at, the, at the event. And it's free um, and open to the public. Wow, that is so mm -hmm. fantastic. And I assume tomorrow too, is free and open to the public, right? For people to attend the farmer's market? Absolutely. Okay. And yep, give us absolutely. the time. And I will, oh, it's from uh, nine to noon for okay. the farmer's market. Cooking in the garden is from six to seven thirty, um, And then our youth garden club is from six to seven. Great, and was there something else you wanted to mention before we let you go, Kyle? Yeah, I'd love to mention uh, one more program that we have called Sizzling Summer Nights. We have one in August and one in September. It's always the first Thursday of the month. 
from 6 to 9 p.m. We kick those off with a with a movement activity. So this month we'll have yoga. We've had Zumba and line dance, hip hop line dancing and all sorts of other things, too. So we have a movement activity and then we have live jazz music, food, vendors. Um, the event is free and then the food and vendors um, are uh, just a small charge, uh, whatever they're they're charging for their for their materials. Wow, you guys do a ton mm -hmm. of great things for all yeah. of us. Thank you so much for being with us here this of morning course. on The Local Vibe. And for everyone at home, once again, you need to head to South Martin Luther King Jr. Drive to visit Simon's Community Garden. And you can always follow along on their Instagram page. That information is on your screen now.